Hey everybody, we're going to talk about the liberal Catholic Church coming up tonight on Talk Gnosis. Welcome to Talk Gnosis. I'm Father Tony Sylvia, and joining me to assist me, is, as always, is Jonathan Stewart. Hello, Jonathan. Hello, Father Tony. I'd ask you how you're doing, but I don't want to depress the audience, you know? No, no, we got that in the... <laughs> that's going to be for the Patreon supporters. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll depress the heck out of them. And we're going to talk tonight about the liberal Catholic Church, and to help us do that, we have Father Douglas Bess of St. Albans Liberal Catholic Church out of Los Angeles. Welcome, Father Bess, and thank you for being on the show. Uh, it's nice to be here. Thank you. All right, so let's get right into it. Tell us about the Liberal Catholic Church. Uh, what is it, and where did it come from? Well, where do we begin? Uh, <laughs> the Liberal Catholic Church uh, has one of the more interesting and uh, uh, complex and fascinating histories of uh, the world of what you know John Plummer calls the independent Catholic uh, churches or the independent sacramental churches. Mm -hmm. um, the Liberal Catholic Church, we actually just celebrated our 100th anniversary. Wow. Uh, so the church was established in February of 1916. Uh, it's kind of a curious church uh, in the sense that it was uh, founded to maintain the uh, Catholic sacraments, the seven sacraments and the apostolic succession. But it was founded by, uh, and I'm assuming your audience is at least moderately aware of a group of uh, esotericists and occultists that are known as the Theosophical Society. Mm -hmm. And so uh, influential theosophists, and most especially uh, a man named uh, James Ingersoll uh, Wedgwood, and an even better known man named Charles Webster Leadbeater, uh, essentially founded the church in 1916 and created essentially a hybrid sort of Catholic slash esoteric uh, Christian church. Uh, so I guess that's the best way to uh, begin by describing what the liberal Catholic church is. Mm -hmm. And so for people who aren't maybe necessarily as familiar with um, uh, sacramentalism, I guess you'd call it, in, in the ecclesiastical, uh, the various ecclesiastical denominations, um, tell us what, uh, what role the sacraments play in the liberal Catholic Church. Well, they're a primary uh, vehicle of, of the sort of esoteric path uh, or the Gnostic path that a lot of liberal Catholics consider themselves to be on. Uh, Charles Leadbeater, uh, within our church known as Bishop uh, Leadbeater, uh, really sort of pioneered uh, a sacramental system where the or an interpretation of this of the traditional Christian sacraments in which the sacraments are seen as what really can if if we're honest with ourselves can be described as a kind of magical uh, Catholicism and so we might get into this a little more later but uh, essentially the sacraments are seen as uh, containing uh, energies uh, that are sort of moved around by the various sort of ritual actions uh, that the priest uh, and uh, also the congregation or parish members are participating in. And there is a sort of corporate uh, acting out of these magical processes, uh, the, the working with these energies, these divine energies. Mm -hmm. uh, the, interestingly, the... Um you mentioned Bishop Leadbeater. Uh, his his kind of most popular work, I think, is uh, Science of the Sacraments. Right. And he goes into some very interesting details about the uh, the Eucharist specifically, and and how um, through the various actions of the priest and the people, uh, create this kind of temple, etheric temple within right. the space. Uh, super interesting work that. Um, you know, if you're at all interested in, in the sacraments or in esoteric Christianity, that's that's one to pick up. Yes, and uh, you did a really uh, excellent job there of sort of uh, adding on a little bit to what I was saying. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, usually re it's referred to as a Eucharistic temple, sometimes as a Eucharistic edifice. And the belief is, is that as the priest and the people sort of work uh, with these energies, that angels are invoked and called upon 
and uh, they assist in as the the liturgy continues, as the 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 sacrament of sacrament of the mass continues and progresses, that this temple is sort of built and it becomes a kind of you know to be crude. I at the at the centennial, I I sort of a probably offended some people but I also um, uh, was serious and when I referred to it in a talk I gave that it's sort of like the the it's a large machine that's being built mm. um, the, almost like a transformer of divine energy if you really look at the way that Leadbeater was talking about it and I even I think jokingly referred to it it's kind of like uh, in Ghostbusters you know when the they are. Uh, they have the little machine that they capture ghosts in. Except we're sort of calling angels into our machine, mm -hmm. <laughs> our very large machine, and uh, actually spreading energy out into the surrounding neighborhood, uh, community, and even into the world. That's the belief of most liberal Catholics. Mm. That's a great right. visual. So, yeah, that's it's amazing. And I also like the Ghostbusters reference. Mm -hmm. So you're you're speaking our <laughs> language. <laughs> the, uh, so is this. Is this mystical understanding of the sacraments is is what would differentiate you from a more mainline sacramental church like the Episcopalians or uh, or a liberal Lutheran church that uses uh, the liturgy? What would be the difference between going to a service at your church, say, than the Episcopalian uh, uh, sacramental church around the corner? Well, uh, when you when you, when you frame it in that way, in terms of when you're attending, uh, especially if you're a visitor, you may not notice. Um, a large difference, uh, say from a high church Anglican or Episcopal service, or uh, if you happen to be near a, a Roman Catholic service that's uh, not completely uh, Vatican II-ized, you might also be able to see something that's a little bit like our service. Um, but what, yes, what the, the primary thing that distinguishes it is this sort of understanding of the working of the energies. Now, it depends. I frequently talk about it from uh, the pulpit, if you want to use that word. Uh, you know, when I give a homily, I will mention it uh, pretty frequently. But a lot of liberal Catholic priests may not. And so if you visit one, you may not really, you'd have to really get to know people and, and get to know the tradition a little bit before you would really kind of understand that that's what's going on. There's references to it in the liturgy itself, where there's, you know, it says we are building a temple for the distribution of Christ's power, at one point the priest says. And that might strike a visitor as a little odd if they had no background to understand it. But other than that, you're really just looking at what appears to be uh, a sort of pre-Vatican II uh, Catholic Mass or Eucharist. In the vernacular, right? Right, right, yes. <laughs> Um, an important question. We we try to get it in uh, in every show when we are when we're kind of talking about different traditions or different mystical paths or connected traditions. Uh, of course, Father Best, you have a, a wonderful podcast, The Inner Kingdom, which we'll link to uh, for our visitors to go check out because it's great. Thank you. Uh, you you mentioned uh, gnosis a lot in that in that podcast. What's what's the liberal Catholic Church's uh, understanding of gnosis? Well, uh, I'll give you the the official. Uh, explanation of the church and then I'll maybe just talk a little bit about my own personal take on it. Uh, the official explanation is, is that the church uh, in its official documents when it describes uh, what it tries to be it says that it's a church that has a complete sort of freedom of belief. Uh, there's no dogmas in the liberal Catholic church so you can pretty much believe and interpret the Christian tradition in whatever way you want to and still take the Eucharist in a liberal Catholic church. Um, so that's the basic groundwork that they work with, but then what they do is they say that the church is intended to be a Gnostic church. Now we can probably get into this later. Um, I have some personal sort of beliefs about what Gnosis is, and they're not necessarily um, tied to what a liberal Catholic would understand necessarily about Gnosis. Uh, because I've studied it quite extensively. I, I had a master's degree from the Claremont School of Theology, and Claremont was very involved with the, the Gnostic uh, documents from Nag Hammadi and mm -hmm. so forth. Um, so the liberal Catholic would just basically interpret Gnosis as 
the uh, the personal acquaintance with the divine. In other words, knowing something for yourself as opposed to a more traditional faith-based understanding of your uh, spirituality or your religion where you're accepting uh, predetermined understandings of the way things should be. And the way a liberal Catholic would understand it is, is you essentially need to develop what really amounts to clairvoyance. You need to be able to have the ability to see divine realities for yourself. And as a matter of fact, one of the things that a liberal Catholic really oftentimes will try to emphasize is, can you see those energies and can you feel them and, and see them in a kind of spiritual or clairvoyant sense as they are occurring in the Mass? Mm. And so that oftentimes is what they mean by gnosis, the direct personal perception of spiritual realities. Mm -hmm. What relationship does the uh, does the liberal Catholic Church have with the Theosophical Society today? Does that relationship continue? No, not really at all. Uh, it's quite. It's a very uh, at the very beginning uh, here. I mentioned that the the history of the liberal Catholic Church is quite fascinating. If you, if you ever, for such a small group, you know, relatively speaking, it has a very, you know, the history of the church is like you could make a movie out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of that, especially in its first decades, centers around uh, the, whole con uh, the whole conflict or working out of an agreement between theosophists and members of the liberal Catholic Church. Uh, but today, though, I mean, the church was really founded um, by Leadbeater and Wedgwood uh, originally to be uh, a vehicle by which people who believe in theosophy are able to have Catholic worship mm -hmm. and essentially be esoteric Christians uh, and understand Christianity as part of what theosophists would call the ancient wisdom. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, very soon after that, within 10 to 20 years, there was a lot of conflicts about, okay, well, what does that really mean? And what's, because the, officially there was supposed to be no official relation, but in the early 20 or 30 years of the church, you really didn't get to be a priest if you weren't a theosophist. Mm -hmm. And a matter of fact, if you weren't a member of the esoteric section of the Theosophical Society. But as the decades have progressed, uh, and especially there was a conflict over, uh, uh, a man named Krishnamurti, mm -hmm. um, who the church actually thought was sort of a second coming of Christ sort of figure uh, during the 1920s and 30s. And, um, you know, that, that conflict over that really began the process of separating the two groups. And now uh, they basically share a worldview for the most part, mm -hmm. but there's, they really try to discourage any kind of... Um, direct cross-fertilization between the two groups. So oftentimes, for instance, people who become the president who are members of the liberal Catholic Church, if they uh, want to become president of the Theosophical Society, they will usually resign their position within the liberal Catholic Church, hmm. uh, you know, even if they're bishops. So Interesting. that shows you the, the, the basic reality of the situation. Yeah. Well, that's very interesting. Well, I'm sure we're going to get into a lot more detail about all of this stuff in the podcast section, so stick around for that and uh, subscribe to the podcast. If you haven't yet, uh, you'll, you'll be missing out on a lot of information if you don't do that. Um, so uh, I've, got, uh, I've got your links here. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll link to your podcast. We'll link to your parish if you're ever in the Los Angeles area and you want to visit with uh, the St. Albans Parish. Uh, you know, visit stalbanslcc.com and uh, you can check out the Liberal Catholic Mass and maybe see if you can see those energies for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thank you, Father Best, for coming on the show. We really appreciate your insight here. You're welcome. Thank uh, you. And for those of you who are watching along at home, we will see you next week. This has been a production of the Gnostic Wisdom Network. For more information about this and all of GWN's programming, please visit GnosticWisdom.net. The opinions expressed in this show do not necessarily reflect the opinions of GWN, the Apostolic Joannite Church, or any other organization. This has been released under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 4.0 International License, and is brought to you by the generous support of our patrons. To support our programs and become a patron, 
please visit patreon.com slash gnostic. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash g-n-o-s-t-i-c. Thank you.